just because you brought it up and I think people would be mad if I didn't ask it because since you brought it up, you said if there's still cravings, there's something we can do. There's something more we have to correct to discourage the cravings from occurring. What is that typically? Is it some sort of mineral deficiency or what do you think that might be? Often. So first of all, I have to understand we are hardwired to chase something called dopamine. So dopamine is what drives our behavior as humans. So the two behaviors that the survival of the human species is predicated on is procreation and eating. And both of those behaviors release dopamine into the mesolimbic pathway of our brain. And that's what makes us get up out of a nice warm cave and go hunting the woolly mammoth in the cold environs. Because we know when we eat, we get this dopamine release and it's a feed forward cycle. So anything that leads to a depression of the natural dopamine level in your body and your brain is going to basically going to increase that desire you have to chase dopamine. And the simple fact is the easiest way for us to get dopamine in our modern world is by eating crap food, go and go down and get a pack of chocolate cookies or what have you. These foods that have been crafted by these scientists for what we call the bliss point to, to maximize the release of dopamine, they're genuinely addictive. And if you've got low dopamine levels, then you will actually have that desire. You can't fight it. So just because putting something in your mouth is a volitional action, we think that eating is entirely under our voluntary control. And that's just nonsense. It's in some ways, it's no more volitional than is breathing. Sure, we can control our breathing. You can stop breathing for a period of time, but sooner or later, you'll cave in. And if you've got a dopamine deficiency, when you're eating junky foods, you're just self-medicating for a neurotransmitter deficiency. And let's have a look at some of the factors that could lead to a dopamine deficiency. So nutrient deficiency. Any female out there who's ever had iron deficiency, iron is one of the factors, the cofactors involved in neurotransmitter synthesis, what we call the catecholaminergic neurotransmitters, so dopamine, serotonin, noradrenaline. Um, B12 is the same. Zinc is the same. So if we've got any potential deficiency like that, then it's likely that we're also going to be deficient in neurotransmitters. And they did an elegant study in people with celiac disease where they actually sampled the fluid around their brain, what we call the cerebrospinal fluid, and they looked at the level of dopamine metabolite, basically how much dopamine was being produced and was accessible to their brain. And they found that when these people were on a gluten-containing diet, their level of dopamine fell, and when they took the gluten out of their diet, their dopamine levels came back up. So if we understand that these inflammatory triggers and these nutrient deficiencies basically lower our neurotransmitter levels and they lead us, we're, we're hardwired to chase this chemical, we're basically going to self-medicate. We're going to self-medicate with crappy food. That's why when we take sugar, you've heard the term comfort, comfort food, stress eating. So what's happening there is you feel really stressed. You want a warm hug and you eat some food, you get a rush of dopamine. That food is giving you that nice warm hug. That's the very premise of stress eating. And if we want to break somebody's addiction to food, we can either tell them to white knuckle it, which is just an awful experience, or we can have a look. We can look at their nutrient levels and find out where they might be deficient, find out what reasons they might actually have to have an impaired synthesis of their neurotransmitters. And if we can sort of work together and start restoring that, and that might be as simple as a B12 injection, that can act as a circuit breaker and help restore their normal, more appropriate neurotransmitter levels, and it will just release the hold that those foods have on them. I'm sure you've heard dozens of people tell you that they've only got control of their food cravings on a carnivore diet, that ever since they made that last break, they go on a carnivore diet, mm. and food loses the hold over them. They can look at a cake at 10 paces and not be overwhelmed by it.